This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 184 of Horsemanship Radio, brought to you by Hands On Gloves, the all-in-one shedding, bathing, grooming gloves. Horsemanship Radio is part of the family of the Horse Radio Network, and today we have two rock stars. One is a very understated Katie Whipple from Maryland, and she is interning out here, and she is doing amazing work for all those horses in Maryland. And then we've got Richard Winters, who everybody knows Richard Winters in the Western world for sure, and anybody who's been to the Road to the Horse, he's our rock star, and he's also the rock star dad. Since this is June, we can talk about daddies. This is Debbie Laux, and you're listening to the Horsemanship Radio. Thanks for joining us. Horsemanship Radio airs on the 1st and the 15th of the month, and I have producer Jen with me today. Hi, Jen. Hello, Debbie. We have two guests Amazing. this time who are so different. I think you I think you did a good job of, of our little intro there because Richard is very much an outgoing, out in front of the world, in the public eye bringing good horsemanship to the world at large and anybody who will watch or listen. Yeah, absolutely. And he's that kind of guy. And our second guest today is a little bit the opposite. She's very quiet, very reserved, and isn't that big giant personality that you, that you see standing inside the spotlight. And no, she's... But she is a hero of But she's very much a hero. She's she's mm-hmm. a little bit of a behind the scenes hero in that she's got her own organization, but she's just she's just doing it quietly yeah. and effectively for the horses and for the humans who love horses. And I got to thinking about that. We need both kinds. Absolutely. The horses do. Yes. <laughs> the true. horses need we need the people yeah. who are out there in front with the big voice and the spotlight. Mm-hmm. But we also need the people who are quietly just getting it done because otherwise the horse, the horse world isn't going to continue to succeed and, and grow. That's right. And she's a real pragmatic, practical person about it, too. Um, there's, you know, if you need to hear that you're not taking care of your horse, Katie's the one to tell you, too. But Katie is the <laughs> mo- You know what I mean? Like, he has to, she has yeah, to be I, there yeah, out on the right. front lines. Yeah, you pragmatic. Know? You're right. Yeah, Saving- just... Saving horses' lives. Yeah. Yeah. And I love her. And she's just been an amazing intern for us here for the three weeks. I think she's been here at least now. And uh, we're just lucky to have her. And I think people will love her, too. Yeah, I think I I can't wait to hear the conversation. Get a little bit of a little bit of behind the scenes of what it's like to be an intern at uh, Flag is Up Farms. And we're going to do that right after we hear from our title sponsor, Hands on Gloves. Hi. I'm Monty Roberts, and am I excited to bring you the news of a revolutionary, new, all-in-one, shedding, bathing, grooming tool, hands-on gloves. They are fantastic. And you believe me, I've tried them all. Hands-on outperforms traditional curry combs, shedding blades, metal bristles, and all those things. Most animals will gravitate to you for more grooming and petting time. If you wear them, your animals will love you more for it. While using the hands-on gloves, you can easily handle water hoses, shampoo bottles, lead ropes, leashes, and anything you want with them on your hands. They are easy to clean, and they massage muscles and stimulate circulation while helping to distribute natural oils for a healthy skin and coat. Hands-on is changing the way we bathe, de-shed, and groom our animals forever. Hands-on gloves. They are fantastic. From teaching his first clinic at a junior college in the early 1980s, Richard Winters has literally traveled around the world sharing his unique brand of horsemanship. Richard won the National Rain Cow Horse Association World Championship in 2005 and then the Road to the Horse Colt Starting Championship in 2009. He's also a top five finalist in the Cowboy Dressage World Finals and an author of From Rider to Horseman, published in 2016 by Western Horseman Magazine. 
living just outside of Weatherford, Texas. He is now a home base for Richard Winters Horsemanship with his wife, Cheryl Winters. Well, welcome, Richard Winters. I'm excited to have you back on Horsemanship Radio. How are you? Deb, I'm doing great, and it's been too long since we have visited, so I've been excited for this phone call. Yeah, well, thank you. I so appreciate that because the only reason it's too long is because you do too much. I can't believe what you've done. You've you, you California native picked up and went to Weatherford, which is probably pretty awesome for your family. You know, we've been West Coast folks all our lives, but it just seems like over the last 20 years, the whole Western performance horse industry is has made a major shift. Not that there aren't still great horsemen on the West Coast, but there's just a lot of stuff going down here in North Texas. And we got a little draw. Our daughter and son-in-law are professional yeah. cow horse trainers, and the little grandbaby showed up after we got here. So we are yeah. all in on Texas. We burned the ships. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, we'll miss you here, but we'll have to come join you there because, like, I think all our friends live there now. I think they all moved to Texas. Yeah, but Isn't that I mean, funny? you got to yeah. brag on you got to brag on Hadley Grace and and tough the puppy a little bit. Yeah. Oh my! You have been stalking us, Deb, because <laughs> uh, uh, Hadley Grace has been in the news for a little while. You just mentioned Tough that at this time yesterday there was no such thing as Tough, <laughs> so that you are up to speed. Well, you know, after we got to Texas and got settled in here, it was not on our radar, nor was it on our daughter Sarah and her husband Chris Dawson's radar. But about six months later, they said we're having a baby. And my wife always envisioned being, you know, just a, a big hands-on instrumental help. And and had we been somewhere else, I don't know how long it would have taken us to get here, you know, even if we wanted to be here. Okay. Uh, but it just divine providence. God just worked this out. We were here. Cheryl's turned into like the full-time nanny uh, she, that she finds very fulfilling. And I always knew she would do a good job, but I didn't realize how good a job that she would do because uh, the kids are just riding, you know, between the two of them, up to 40 horses a day, oh. just climbing on one after oh. the other, super busy. And they love that little girl, but they're making a living as well. So to have Cheryl yeah. there watching the baby or the baby comes here, and this is how crazy it is, Deb. If, if This is what crazy people do. Man, I was I... in an airport. We're, we're jealous for that craziness, man. That sounds really oh, good. What were you doing in an airport? I was just, just going to say, I was in an airport the other day and some two, no, two strangers. I had never seen them before in my life. I'm whipping out my cell phone and showing them pictures of my granddaughter. <laughs> Who does that? That is you weird. Do. <laughs> uh, but I'm that guy now. I'm that and guy. So I'm happy to be that guy. Aww. And then you mentioned this other thing about tough. Yeah. We lost our, my wife's little lap dog uh, a few months ago, and she, she loved that little dog. It was a very sad day. And she said, don't get me another dog. I'm, I'm busy with this grandbaby now. I can't do justice to another dog. It's not fair. Um, don't surprise me with a dog. She comes home yesterday with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> she did it. Be at the at the dry cleaners that she could not resist. Oh, so uh, she says, now Hadley Grace will have a puppy. So, well, that makes perfect sense that? to me. You know, you can't just have one. It's like potato chips. <laughs> you got to have them all together. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's goodness. great. So, that's see, great. I'm so I'm so excited on. for you and your family and have them close together. And yeah, and you mentioned yeah. Sarah and her husband, Chris Dawson. Those are the power couples in Rain Cow Horse. <sighs> work these days and you know but uh but let's talk about grandpa a little bit you're the multi-talented oh. <laughs> you're the multi-talented one you started it all or you wouldn't have good knockoffs you know like in sarah <laughs> and oh my and I, you know we all want to know i mean that you do so many different things i read it in your bio here that uh, for everybody to know that you've done everything from national rain cow horse association championships and road to the horse championships and cowboy dressage championship my goodness what is your favorite day on horseback? I got to ask. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, any day on any horse is better Good than answer. not being horseback. I'm just, I got that gene, I guess, or that bug that most of the time little girls have it. But once in a while, a little boy will get it. And I just love being horseback. But, but I will admit, when I am up on top of a nice rain cow horse and doing our deal, you know, there's just nothing cooler 
I don't care what kind of ride they come up with Dis- at Disneyland, but for those <laughs> horses to stop and turn around and change leads and work a cow and go down the fence, I mean, that's an e-ticket ride right there. Yeah, it's e-ticket. That's <laughs> It is awesome. You know, mom and dad are both still riding Rainers. Dad has his 18-year-old Chrome who acts more like eight, but uh, he did for his 86th <laughs> birthday. He had a little fun with some black cows out here. And uh, and I think, it, you know, it it's that exhilaration that they still get out of watching those horses just down the neck do what they do. Yep, yep, you bet. And, and your dad... Uh, you know, is and has been a pioneer in the rain cow horse deal. He was showing, showing cow horses before cow horses were cool. Uh, <laughs> and, and you know, he's just uh, one of the patriarchs of our deal and the famous horses that he rode uh, that we all look up to and admire. And the fact that he's still out there today, hey, there's a role model for me. I, ho- I hope I'm swinging a leg over one when I'm an octogenarian. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you about that, Richard. I understand that you were just with Jack Brainerd, uh, 100 years of horsemanship now, and Chris Cox recently. That's pretty awesome. Still to be teaching at 100. What do you think? Is that inspiring? Oh, it is amazing. And I I just so wanted to be there and was so honored to be invited. Uh, Really a history-making event that at 100 years of age, he goes out there and instructs us and teaches us and shares his knowledge with us. And it just wasn't that long ago that he was still a horseback and still riding around. Uh, and to be as sharp as he is, and just the myriad of stories, the evolution that he has seen in horsemanship over the last 75, 80 years, uh, pretty cool guy to be around. Can't even imagine. That's cool. Now, when the guy who's cool to be around, that's Richard Winters, is around the guy that's cool to be around, that would be a fun party. I think that's really that's really cool that you guys made it and <laughs> made the effort to be together and everything else, too. I know traveling is hard these days. and um, But it is amazing. The last hundred years, what an evolution that horsemanship has taken. And what I love about your story, too, is that you weren't born in the saddle you really uh, you know you were teaching we mentioned that you taught your first clinic uh, you know in the early 80s but uh, you weren't born with a, a silver spade in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> well that's right as far as having family opportunities we were raised in town my dad was a preacher my mom was a nurse we lived right in downtown fresno they didn't know nor to this day do they know anything about horses but I was just that little kid, as I mentioned earlier, that that's all I thought about. And in grade school, I found a stable about seven miles from our house that uh, I was just the proverbial stable brat. I'd pedal my bicycle out there and hang around and help the old man saddle dude horses on Saturday morning and, and help him harness up the workhorse to go feed. And, and that was my first experience. And then heading up to the mountains to wrangle dude horses uh, at a summer camp through junior high and high school. And, and then having the opportunity to go to a horseshoeing school in high school and then work for a horse trainer in Clovis, California, that kind of introduced me to the higher levels of horsemanship at that time. And yeah, I just never looked back. This is all I've ever done. Never wanted to be a policeman or a fireman or an mm-hmm. astronaut. Uh, so I had a lot of desire. I was just needing opportunities. But if you have enough desire and you're not afraid to work at it, Uh, and put in your time, uh, I believe that those opportunities can present themselves. Mm, That's what makes you a good teacher. And that's why I was noticing that you're doing these all women's horsemanship retreats. Like you were recently out in central California um, at the V6 ranch, right? Yeah, that's right. Just got back. Had a great time. Beautiful. And did, did you ever have the pleasure of knowing Sheila Varian? Yes. Oh, we, in fact, your dad came to one of these events in Santa Inez called Light Hands Horsemanship. Oh, yes, of course. Um, and Sheila came to that. And yeah, what a fun, fun lady. And it's just such a privilege to get to know her. She's one of the cousins of the variants that own the ranch and yeah. passed away a few years ago. Uh, and I remember her coming up to the Futurity and even when she was sick uh, and, and at the sunset time of her life, she was like a grade school girl. Just watch those great horses go and, and bought her ticket and just stood there in the stands and so excited even though she was a rain cow horse competitor herself yeah. you know for many years uh as as a younger woman and so yeah pretty special lady loved Very. horses loved horsemanship yeah. and a great example 
Yeah, see, and I can just hear it in your voice, too. So tell us a little bit about these retreats, because they sound fun to me. And this is, you know, I'm your demographic right here, Richard. I, I want to go. So, yeah, oh, so what do you do? Yeah. What do you do on these? Yeah. Well, you know, on any given given weekend, we might be somewhere around the country doing a horsemanship clinic or seminar. Uh, that's not unusual. But once a year, we go out, we've, we've just made this great collaboration with the Barians at the V6 Ranch in Parkfield, California, where it's a 20,000 acre working cattle ranch, but they're set up for guests. They have a lodge and a bunkhouse and camping and restaurant. It's full service deal really fits us. And we do our horsemanship there in a real world setting rather than just going out into the middle of the arena for three hours and working on exercises and helping people with their horses. We take it out there where, where life really happens. How are we going to get down through that ditch? How are we going to get around these cattle and gather them up? And so we do the all women's horsemanship retreat. And speaking of demographics, we might, mm-hmm. we could probably just call it a retreat. And it seems like it's always 90% women anyway. Women anyway, yeah. Uh, where, are the guys, where are the guys at? I don't know. But, don't know. Uh, but that's a lot of fun where all the women can come together and, uh, and nobody has to feel like, oh, I'm not good enough or these people are better than me. We just come and bring the horse you've got or you can lease a horse from the V6 ranch. And said, so you've come to our event with an envelope of experience and and comfort level and i hope that by by the time you leave we have just opened up that envelope a little bit that some things you weren't quite comfortable doing now you're comfortable doing them because for a lot of people and oftentimes it is the middle-aged woman the way they are riding today is not what they envisioned when they were 14 Mm. when they were watching black beauty on tv they thought they were going to be galloping across the meadows and going through the streams and and now just to kind of you know trot across the arena sometimes or pick up their left lead is a little touchy so i'm just (laughs) helping them you know put that fun and that enjoyment and that confidence back into their riding and out at the b6 we just do it in in that real world scenario uh where a lot of people don't get the chance to ride uh you know for the most part Beautiful country. Absolutely gorgeous country, too. So people should take you up on that, too. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing everything that you do all the time and being such a good teacher. I really believe that coming up, you know, not just having it firsthand, but having it really work for it and having it secondhand, that makes a better teacher. And obviously, you are a good teacher because you've got Sarah Dawson, Sarah Winters Dawson, as a as a daughter. So it, it rubbed off, too. You were a good teacher for her. And I mean, look at that she found somebody who's also probably a really good teacher chris chris dawson but uh, yeah, we gonna, are we sure. gonna are we gonna see anybody at road to the horse what's the road to the horse uh are you guys uh are you guys still a part of that you know well actually uh i just spoke with them we just called and you know they had to as with everybody in events this last year just crazy i'd hate to be an event organizer mm-hmm. You know, they had to put it on hold, and then they were finally able to do a, a smaller version of it here in Fort Worth uh, a few weeks ago. But they're going back to Lexington next year. And I've served in a lot of roles in Road to the Horse over the years, from competitor to uh, horsemanship commentator. So now it looks like I might go back as a judge. Uh, so uh, I'm excited about that. I'll have a front row seat to all the action. It's going to be back in Lexington, as I mentioned. And uh, it's always an exciting event. They're always trying to make it a little bit better and truly make it about horsemanship. Yeah. You know, whenever us people get into stuff, we can we can make things weird. But the organizers, their heart really is in the right place to yeah. really be there for the horse and, and showcase and highlight what these almost magical cult starters can do in presenting ideas to young horses. You know, as as Monty has done for years, taking these young horses in a few minutes and, and presenting ideas in a way that they can understand. But everybody has their own style and their own technique, and mm-hmm. it's fun to watch them all. It is. Talented people. Talented people and talented people that are running it, too. So we're really, really excited to see what they got for us next year and all those great horses that come out of that, too. It's it's just uh, it's one of those things where I think it's probably one of the most broad demographics you know all these people from all over the world now can watch it too uh, you know they i watch back on the vi- video and the things that they record I, it's just been an amazing uh, outcropping of horsemanship in the last 10 years or 20 years now too so really yeah, excited sure, about that sure. really excited yeah. about that and cheryl is good how's cheryl doing 
Oh, thank you for asking. She is doing great. Uh, you know, when this grandbaby came along, this had to be a joint commitment between me and her. And so however needy I am, I'm having to be a little more self-sufficient in some areas so that she can be freed up to take care of this baby. But it's just so fun to watch her, uh, you know, help raise this little girl. And not to say that she's not very involved in our business because she is. She does yeah. all the videography, all the editing for the training things that we do, yeah. uh, keeps her checkbook in the black. And 36 years uh, with the, with my first wife, so I'm pretty tickled about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, if, if I've enjoyed any kind of modest success in my life, I think it's because I'm married right. Good man. And and keep believing that because that's what keeps a marriage together. Good man. <laughs> I think so. I, yeah, yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you do, Richard Winters, and, and for all the family too. Say hi for us, from our family. Monty, Pat, and I all said to say hi for you, uh, to you. And, oh, uh, thank yeah, you. Look yeah. forward to seeing well, you in just, Texas. Again, such, yeah, mm-hmm. and again, it's a privilege uh, for you guys to give me a call and, and let me visit with you all. So uh, let's do it again. I will. Thanks, Richard. Thanks for being on Horsemanship Radio. Listen up, horse owners. If your horses can't get out on green grass for their daily dose of omegas, Purina's got you covered. The Purina team of PhD equine nutritionists have two new products that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, and they taste better than many sources. Looking at you, fish oil. Try the new Purina Omega Match Timothy-based Ration Balancer or Ahi Flower Oil Supplement and see for yourself why these are among some of the best omegas that nature offers. It can take science and love together, each pulling their weight to help your horses live their best lives. Put our research to the test at purinamills.com forward slash omega match. A lifelong horse person, Katie Whipple has specifically been involved in equine welfare since 2017. As assessments specialist for the Maryland Equine Transition Service, METS, a right horse partner, Katie is tasked with traveling to assess horses on site, gathering all information, photos, and videos necessary for creating a successful listing. Katie also processes applications for METS horses, checking references and interviewing applicants. If facilitation of services such as transport or euthanasia is needed, Katie sources and schedules these. Katie also assists the METS marketing and fundraising needs, including the website, social media, grant applications. Katie will soon be transitioning to Days In Farm Horse Rescue, another right horse partner, to further her career in equine welfare. She'll be focusing on engaging supporters, facilitating the development team, and furthering the overall mission of the organization to rescue and rehabilitate suffering horses and to prevent abuse and neglect through education and outreach. Well, welcome, Katie Whipple. I am so glad to have you not only on the show, but at Flag is Up Farms as an intern. How are you? Oh, I am doing so wonderful. It is such an honor to be here on so many levels. Um, thank you so much for having me here and on your podcast. I am glad to have you here all the way from Maryland, which is yes. an amazingly long trip during COVID days. <laughs> <laughs> These days, traveling at all is pretty special, but we're really glad. And we're we're here, let's see, you're here for three weeks, I believe, right? You're able to stay That's correct. Weeks? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. And you've only been here for four or five days, and I'm not going to have you do a download on everything you've learned <laughs> in this short time, right? How many days have you been here now? Just to give people... Um, I got in on Saturday, so my internship started on Monday. So yeah, today's day four of the internship. Day four um, of the internship. Great. Yeah. And how many horses have you been able to work with so far? Oh, um, so there's, uh, I think, seven horses in the program right now, and I have personally worked on, I think, six of them, plus Skinny. <laughs> skinny the Mustang. That's so great. Yeah. And is he skinny? Do you find him skinny? No, he's... Definitely. He's a hippo. I love him. He must be so <laughs> comfy. <laughs> he is yeah, I, a happy <laughs> Mustang. Yes, that's true. He's yeah, but skinny. it's it's um it's been really great learning, you know, the differences between each horse and, you know, figuring out really quickly what each one is working on and being able to read them um through this language, you know. I mean, I've only been here four days, but I've already absorbed so much. Um, it's really exciting. 
great. So even though you sound like a young upstart, you are not. You have been around horses for a long time. Tell us a little bit about how you got into horses. What's your story? Sure. Uh, well, I was born and raised in England um, and got on top of a horse for the first time when I was three. Um, and I rode all through up until college. And I took a break then and it ended up being a longer than longer break than I would have liked. Um, and I found my way back in after my kids were born. And this was really just a few years ago. And um, I was drawn to the world of equine welfare. And um, I've kind of been making my way into that industry since. And um, it's fascinating and hard and challenging and so rewarding. Um, yeah, so, there's great so, people here. Oh, that's nice. That That's nice to hear, too. And it is challenging. You've got an eight and a five-year-old. Am I right about that? I am, yes. Mm-hmm. Eight yeah. and a five-year-old, yeah. You this are in my first time away life. from them. So. Oh, Katie. Oh, I feel guilty now. But, but we've given you oh, all no, the don't. kids to play with. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I've got kids with four four legs now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And they are young. And th- this is the fun part of animal welfare around here is that we do have quite a few. In, so we should say that you're working within the Monty Roberts Mustang and Transition Horse Program. Uh, mm-hmm. Hence the skinny part of that, too. Yeah. Hence skinny is the Mustang but the others are all OTTBs right now that we have on board here. And uh, you're helping learn the gentling process. uh, And that sounds funny for horses that may have been professionals at the track, but they don't come with a lot of manners sometimes. There's different uh, qualities of of training that go into these thoroughbreds when they go to the track and different qualities of training that come off the track with them too. So so what drew you to this animal welfare process? trajectory that you're on right now? You know, it's um, knowing that we could do more and be better for these animals. We ask so much of them um, from the racehorse to the lesson pony and kind of everything in between. Um, And, you know, I just, I became aware of some of the struggles that horses face, um, you know, with auction and slaughter um, and, you know, just the vulnerability that they um, encounter moving from home to home. Um, And I just, I felt that I could be of service to them. Um, So I found my way in. (laughs) Um, Yeah, Yeah, they're lucky to have you. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, of course. So your task is to assess and then help find new homes or, or market these horses for for owners, which is really interesting. That um, that's a kind of a specialty um, skill <laughs> skill set. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Tell me so a little bit about work, that. Mm-hmm. Sure. So yeah, my work with Mets, the Maryland Equine Transition Service, we are um, the first in the country with this kind of model. We don't take ownership of the horses in our program. So as a as assessment specialist, I go out and I meet the owners, I meet the horses, um, I get my hands on, you know, I see, you know, in the little time I have, kind of get a feel for what they know, what their sensitivities might be, and figure out the best way that we can ensure them a safe transition, um, whether that be into a new home or maybe they're a candidate for humane euthanasia, whatever it might be. Um, and it's really, um, it's become a program that is as much for the humans involved as for the horses. Uh, we find that a lot of the people we deal with really don't necessarily want to get rid of their horses. They just have to for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, so especially in the case of a humane euthanasia, um, you know, we, we kind of act as a, I don't want to say therapist because I, I'm not qualified for that, but um, it's, an understanding, judgment-free mm-hmm. service. You know, mm-hmm. we really strive for transparency and lack of judgment because that's how we keep the animals safe. Um, and having that focus has really helped the people who we deal with, I think, as well, because they can trust us. They know that we're going to tell them um, if it's a good idea, a bad idea. And again, it's our opinion. We're not vets, but mm-hmm. here's what you might want to consider based on what we've experienced. Um, it's really, it's really rewarding. How long has Be- METS been around? So METS stands for the Maryland 
wait, let's see. Sorry. What is the acronym for Ma- that? Maryland Equine Transition Service. Right. How long has that been and, around? Um, we officially launched in August of 2018. Okay. And how successful do you feel like it's been? Yeah, it is a baby. Yeah, it's. I think it's been great. We have helped directly re-home, transition, I should say, because um, this includes euthanasia numbers, um, over 100 horses in those three wow. years. Yeah, um, that's great. And we've indirectly helped more than 200. And by indirectly, I mean, um, you know, we'll take the horse into our program, but then the owner finds another solution for them. Um, and often, it is often the case that they use our listings to reach out to their own contacts and kind of share a link. Um, so even though that's not a direct METS transition, we're still assisting. We're still providing a service. Yeah, um, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, so what, we were, mm-hmm. I was going to say, what do you think is your greatest asset as an assessor? They've chosen you and, and in, a, in a pretty prestigious area of Maryland. And um, what do you think? is a skill set that you have that makes that you really it's a lot of pressure on you in a single visit to create uh, a decision based on some vital important information what 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 do you do well at that i have a lot of compassion for the animals and for the people and um i want everybody to be comfortable and i am also always looking to learn things i am always open to a new experience, to a new nugget of information. And I think that that, those two things together make it easy for owners to trust Mm -hmm. what we do. Um, You know, I mean, obviously my background in horses helps. I worked with a, a nonprofit rescue for a while and I got a lot of information, a lot of knowledge from that. And that definitely helps. You need to have a really robust understanding of the horse to do this job successfully, but you have to be open. You Mm -hmm. have to be vulnerable so that they can be vulnerable too. Mm, Um, And I think that, I think that's a really important part of any position in animal welfare, um, Mm -hmm. really. And what do you, how does a person find themselves needing to surrender a horse to Mets? That's a really great question. We did, we actually, um, looked at all our records from last year and the number one reason was, um, rideability, um, Mm -hmm. and not necessarily of the horse, but that the owner, their ability to ride had changed. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it was also financial changes of the owner. Yeah. So a lot of our horses, we, we do have a lot of companion horses looking for, for homes, but, when we get a rideable horse in, they usually don't last very long uh, Mm -hmm. because they've, you know, they've been treated well and there's nothing necessarily quote unquote wrong with them. Mm -hmm. It's just that their owner has found themselves in a sticky situation and they just can't care for them anymore. They fully intended on keeping their horse to the end of their life, but things change. Mm -hmm. And um, it's our belief that we shouldn't hold that against people. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's, it's not their fault. So let's help yeah. them keep their horse safe. And they're making good decisions. To, if they've sought you out, you know, those are the owners I want to applaud that they're they're yeah. actually doing something about it. How do you know when you've found a good match? You know, how do you know that that uh, it's going to stick? Yeah, it's you know, there's a gut feeling to it. Um, I put I put quite a bit of stock in intuition, and because Mets doesn't take ownership of the horses, we don't have any deciding mm-hmm. power. Um, but I definitely I run all the applications for people looking to take one of our horses, and I I call all their references and I talk to them directly for a little bit as well. Um, and if I have a really good gut feeling about it, or if, you know, on the flip side, if there's some red flags, you know, my gut's telling me, ooh, not a good fit for whatever mm-hmm. reason, we pass that information on to the owner. Um, and usually if I have a really good feeling about it, the owner ends up having a really good feeling about it and it ends up being a match. Um, it's, um, it's a dance sometimes because some people overestimate their ability or what they might be able to handle. So we have to kind of massage that with them a little bit and maybe you should look at this horse and then that ends up being a good fit. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great that you can, you feel confident enough to steer that too. So, um, you know, you don't have 80 years uh, in the industry 
like dad does. <laughs> so a lot, a lot of us, you know, are kind of intimidated to tell people that or, you know, go with the gut. So I'm glad, I'm glad that you have that skill set and uh, yeah. it, it bodes well for the program and it bodes well for, so you'll, you're going to be transitioning soon to day's end farm horse rescue. And that's oh, another yeah. right horse partner. Tell us about that. Excited? Yeah, I am really excited about this opportunity. So, um, you know, it's the next step in furthering my career in equine welfare. Um, they're a great organization. They do a lot of work almost exclusively with animal control organizations in the area. So they do a lot of rehabbing and retraining and rehoming. Um, they just celebrated 30 years of being wow. a nonprofit organization, which is, I think, immensely. Yeah, <laughs> impressive. impressive. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Um, and they're an organization, and this speaks to me on a personal level for what we were just talking about. They're an organization that is constantly evolving and readjusting what their goals are to meet the needs of their clientele, their community, and what they think will help the broader scope of equine welfare. Um, and I really appreciate that about them. You know, stagnant organizations aren't ones that are going to help long-term. Right. I don't think you're even going to be in the right horse uh, network if you're right. pretty stagnant. That's the nice thing about the righthorse.org is uh, or, uh, the whole program of the ASPCA, the right horse, is that uh, it's juried, right? It's it's vetted yeah. for or where you're going. And and I guess that that just begs the question of where does where does Katie see herself 10 years from now? What do you what's the next leap for you? You know, I just, I just, I tell, I tell people all the time, I just want to pet the ponies. I just want to help the ponies, <laughs> you know? Um, so I would, I would love to, you know, be an integral part of Day Zen's expansion. They are um, expanding the farm this year and creating a really big facility for education and outreach, um, which I think is tremendous and needed because I, I agree that a lot of the equine welfare issues could be circumvented if there were better, more accessible education to the public. Because mm-hmm. um, a lot of times people just don't know, well, that's, that's not best practice anymore. It might have been 30 years ago, but now we do this. And here's how you can keep your horse healthy. Or here's, you know, don't use barbed wire, use this, you, whatever it might be. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm really excited to be a part of that transition into making equine welfare a bigger part of the public conversation. Yeah, um, great. I think education yeah. is is the trick, isn't it? I mean, it's it's always about knowing the horses are out there, so I guess there's some marketing to it, but but educating the owners that are at the track, uh, educating the owners that are might be getting in trouble a little bit mm-hmm. to either recover from that trouble that they've caused themselves or to to move on uh, to something else right. too, and that just takes education. So I'm a big believer in that. And Speaking of education, so you've only been here four years, four days, four days, uh-huh. <laughs> but what, what do you think is the most important thing you've learned in the four days that surprised you? Oh, the power of my body. Uh-huh. <laughs> just, Interesting. Just the, I was actually doing this with Skinny this morning. We did a join up and then I was long lining him and I was just playing with the position of my body and the amount of energy I was projecting. And I know... I know to some people it's it could sound kooky, but just thinking about the energy you're projecting and the way it can affect even just the length of the gate, mm-hmm. you know, if he's in a canter, just take a little bit of an extended stride and then I pull back my energy and he comes down into a trot. Um, it, the exquisite sensitivity that the horses have to the tiniest little things here. I knew that they listen to our body language but I had no idea. It was so very nuanced and I'm really looking forward to fine tuning that so I can, you know, bring that back to the, the horses at home, especially the horses who are in desperate need of rehab, who maybe have been mistreated. They need effective, but subtle language to communicate with the big movements aren't going to work for them because it's going to scare them. So this type of education is something that is really going to, I think, make a big impact with, with, the mistreated horses that I might have the opportunity to work with in the future. 
That's brilliant. That is so intuitive. I'm so glad you pick up on that. Have you done the pasture moving yet? Have you done the uh, played out in the pasture with the with the transition horses? Not yet, no. Oh, I can't yeah. wait. I can't oh, wait to share that with you too. <laughs> because I this is one thing we we plan to do with the movement too. So uh, upcoming here pretty quick, June 18, 19, 20, we're going to have the movement, movement2021.com. And one of the things that we share with people, and it can be complete layman, is just observing, number one, mm-hmm. horses in the pasture and the hierarchy, of course, but mm-hmm. also how our bodies affect so much our eyes, our shoulders, our fingers, hands, mm-hmm. uh, even just, even just, as you say, energy. Now, we should say this is based in science because energy yeah. is intent and horses read our intent better than almost any creature. I mean, your dogs can read your intent pretty darn well, but mm-hmm. they live in the house with us. So, right. so for a horse <laughs> to be second in line is pretty darn perceptive of a horse. Mm-hmm. So I'm so glad that you said that. That was well said. And I, you know, I can tell you, you've got a master's in English literature. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very well said. It didn't go to waste. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go to waste, mom. Yeah. It was really fun having you on, Katie. I so appreciate your time here on Horsemanship Radio. Yeah. And I'd love to have you back when you can tell us more. Sure. Thank you so much, Debbie. It was a pleasure. Whisper the language of the herd. Listen, you don't have to say a word. It's time for Jamie Jennings to fetch an email from Monty Roberts' inbox and share a morsel of Monty's wisdom in a little segment we like to call Ask Monty. Leave this world a better place than the magic in the language. Dear Monty, I love my horse, and I think my horse loves me. He follows me around already. Do I still need to do join-up? Monty's answer. Join-up is a condition that follows a logical line of communication. It is a piece of completed communication that informs the horse that you are aware of his or her language and that you understand it. It has far less to do with love than with understanding. With a few exceptions, I recommend join up as a communication effort with every horse I work with. It builds the foundation for a mutual understanding between horse and human, which in turn results in trust and the earning of that trust. I appreciate your position that the horse already accepts you, and I understand why you would ask whether join up is still necessary. I would suggest that when properly executed, it always helps and never has negative effects. The exceptions might be orphan foals or aggressive stallions. These constitute another subject and should be left to the professionals. What I do need to do to bring you to a greater understanding of these concepts is to explore for a moment the definition of join-up. It is not a simple acceptance of one or another by horse and human. It is far more than a simple curiosity or even a strong bond. Join-up, within my concepts, is a procedure and something far greater than what you have described with your horse. Join-up is that moment in which the horse decides that it is better to be with you than to go away. This is achieved, however, only after a body of work that is designed to inform the horse that you understand his language and that you are prepared to live by the principles inherent in him after millions of years during which his nature has been imprinted with certain rules. Join up in the understanding of the language of Equus are used to convince the horse through a series of carefully designed exercises that you mean no harm. Violence can play no part in this process. The horse person must live up to the trust he or she engenders. We must agree to adhere to the tenets of nonviolence or not use these principles at all. For more of these insights into good horsemanship, go to MontyRoberts.com and click on the words Ask Monty at the bottom of the page. Imagine if you could take Monty to the barn with you. Watch and learn as he addresses each challenge with your horse and answers your questions too. You head to the arena and you work on each new lesson knowing Monty's there to encourage you all with violence-free, tried-and-true methods. After all, he's been helping train horse lovers all his life. With his online university, you could be like Kathy, a retired teacher who just brought her first horse. Recently, I went to a tack shop to look for a smaller halter. I'm 61, just purchased my 14-hand POA the day after my birthday, just a few weeks ago. 
after never having had a horse. And yes, that's crazy. But as a retired teacher who never had a hobby other than teaching, I decided to go for it. My hubby and I have taken lessons this past year, but I really longed for a relationship with a horse. Um, The only other experience I'd ever had was to ride a horse in Philly, Pennsylvania, my hometown, when I was 16, and I got bucked off. And that was it (laughs) until I was 61. Um, Well, the owner of this tax shop, um, this is precious lady, 84-year-old lady, gave me a copy of this magazine, Equine Monthly. And the article I read in it was Horses Are Biofeedback Beings. And it was just so interesting. I really felt like I just found a pot of gold when I read it because in it, it talked about Monty's online university and that I could have access to 575 videos for $10 a month. And before that, I was just searching YouTube for everything I could find. But truthfully, that's just a pain. Um, I love that the uni videos are concise and they're in order. Um, They have extra notes and a quiz. And I just can't thank you enough for the huge blessing of your online university really has changed my life and I will never be the same. Um, I've had my horse Jack now for seven weeks and thanks to the videos I've done join up with him and it really worked like a dream. Uh, I had to do it in an arena, but it still worked thanks to Monty's lessons and the cues and the hand signals. Um, The ability to watch the lessons over and over on demand is incredible. So I also want to thank you so very much for making the online university affordable for this retired teacher. Thank you so much for all that you do for everyone who really wants to love a horse. Kathy. Where in the world is Monty Roberts? Monty is looking forward to meeting some new friends, two-legged and four-legged, in June. Here we are. It's June 4th through 6th. We have the introductory course, Module 4, which is the preparation for those intro exams. And we've got some good students coming up. And then 7 through 11, June 7 through 11, we have our Gentling Wild Horse course. Oh, man, we have some good horses up our sleeves for this, too. You, I, I can't wait to show you photos, Jen. It's going to be really fun. And then June 11 through 13, Monty will be up at the Western States Horse Expo. That's in Murrieta, California. That's near Sacramento. And really, his demonstration is on the 12th, which is Saturday. So we'll see you there. And then at 18 through 20 of June, we have The Movement. 2021. And we've got some exciting guests for you on that one. And uh, and a really cool flow with these, not only some crazy Mustangs out of New Mexico, but we also have our transition horses too. So everybody gets to see all of that in the Gentling facility this year. So then we have the 21st through the 25th, we have Amani special training, which is always fun. And we'll be doing a lot of filming there. So y'all be rock stars on that one. And then July 2nd through 4, we have our Horse Sense and Healing, which of course, you've got to have horse since in healing for our veterans over 4th of July and first responders. And then we've got July 12 through 23 is our, our full on introductory course of horsemanship. So in, instead of taking all those little modules, if you want to just get her all done, the 12 through 23 will be the full introductory course of horsemanship. And then we've got August um, for our long extended calendars. 2nd through 13th is a gentling wild horse course. That's a 10 day gentling course and we'll get those horses saddled in the end and then august 16th through 20 is the money special training again and we've got some other horses for that which is pretty exciting about how many different horses go Mm. through your programs in a year Boy, oh boy, it's a great question, Jen. Um, I got to get a calculator out. No, it's not that many. It's, it's not too many. But it's probably, we figured out through the school and um, before the transition horses, we were at about 25, maybe 30 25, per 30. year. That's mm-hmm. still a lot of but, horses. Yeah, but with the transition horses now, which is all just part of our everyday here too, and we use them in the classes, It we've just, we've adopted out over 15 now. Oh, cool. I think our 16th was today. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, exactly. It's a milestone. So we can tack those on top of that number. So we're we're climbing up there. We're Yay. Cool. And speaking of climbing up there, we've got a little message from Rain in Your Herd, one of the many podcasts here on the Horse Radio Network. And then we'll be right back. Hi, I'm April. 
And I am Laura, and we are the hosts of the Rain in Your Herd podcast. Where we help with building an online presence for your equine business. So this can include online marketing, social media, blogs, YouTube, online memberships, courses, Facebook ads, and websites. We give you the tips you need to dive in on these subjects and also interview other equine business owners who are doing it well. We have a lot of fun doing it. So we hope to see you over on Rain in Your Herd. Well, if you're interested in attending any of the courses, getting a tour, maybe looking at one of the transition horses to be one of your very own, you can find out all of that and more at MontyRoberts.com. Then the phone number at Flag is Up Farms is 805-688-6288. And you can go to MontyRoberts.com and find the phone number. So there you go. Either way. There you go. Mm -hmm. And for details about today's show, episode 184, you can go to horsemanshipradio.com. You're going to find links and photos of today's guests and topics. We love your feedback. A great way to give us feedback is by, by following Monty on social media. His Facebook page is Monty Roberts, the one with the little blue check mark. And on mm -hmm. Twitter and Instagram, Monty's handle is Monty underscore Roberts. And get your app. If you haven't got the app already, that's the easiest way to listen. Just go to your app store for your iPhone or your Android and just look up Horse Radio Network and you can download the app. You can tell the app to download just specific shows, Horsemanship Radio, for example, mm -hmm. or you can hit the all button and they show up in your phone every week and you don't have to try to remember. Yeah. All the merrier, too. Yeah, that's so much fun. You guys have so many great shows. So many thanks to our sponsors, too. We've got our hands-on glove. Jay Michelson has been such a great supporter. And until next time, have many happy horse hours. 